to a top secret location in Leicestershire, where she goes in search of a food that's as elusive as it is expensive. And it's been kept under a veil of secrecy for seven years because this is the first farm in Britain to grow the delicacy black truffle commercially. And it's said to be worth its weight in gold. Bringing the truffle back to the British countryside is something Paul Thomas is particularly passionate about. It's been an uphill battle for Paul. We're looking for an investment of £75,000. Now, Mycorrhizal Systems is a company based around the production of black truffles. But he managed to secure some pretty impressive backing. If you're happy, it's a deal. Yep, 20 euro. Thank you. To fund his dream of cultivating the truffle under home soil. Paul, great to see you. Hi there, nice to see you. <laughs> 12 years later, I've come to see how he's getting on. Truffles used to grow over quite large swathes of uh, England, really. We used to have markets in the southwest. Mrs. Beaton wrote about them. But when we lost a lot of our natural woodland, we lost a lot of our wild truffles. So at the moment, there's not that much produced in the wild, so we're cultivating them to try and bring that industry back. And, of course, there's a financial incentive, because they're, they're worth quite a bit of money. But it's not a harvest for the faint-hearted. Unlike more common crops that produce each year, Paul has to wait longer much longer before his fungus comes to fruition. So is this it? Is this the tree that gave you the first truffle? Yeah, this is the tree which produced Britain's first cultivated truffle. I was digging around the base of the tree, just looking for roots to sample, and then unexpectedly just hit this truffle. Incredibly exciting day. And how long did this tree take to give you that first harvest? Uh, this took six years. Six year wait for a harvest, that seems quite a while. Yeah, but it, I mean, once they're producing, they produce every year, so it's worth it, but it is You've got to wait for the tree to mature, for the fungus to mature, so it uh, takes a good few years. And how do you get trees to give you truffles? Uh, well, we start from a seed, and all these trees you see around you, actually, are seeds that I've planted myself. So we start from a seed, we clean them up, we grow them in a very clean, sterile environment in the lab, we culture up the truffle fungus, and then we introduce them to each other. And we get the fungus to bind with the root system of the tree and it covers the root system like a glove covering a hand. And then we take that young plant, we plant it into the ground in carefully controlled soil conditions, and then they grow up and six years later produce us wonderful truffles. Sought after by some of the world's best chefs, they're prized for their earthy taste and distinctive aroma. And demand is on the rise, even though they cost over 400 pounds per kilo. Although traditionally harvested in the autumn months, because of the milder climate, English-grown summer truffles can be unearthed as early as June without compromising their flavour or fragrance. But finding truffles has always proved a little tricky. Traditionally, pigs were used as they're attracted to a chemical released by the underground mushroom. But they had a horrible habit of eating them. For that reason, dogs are now the truffle hunter's companion of choice. This is Freddy. Hey. Truffle hunting is new to him, and although he's been in training for some time, today the pressure is really on. Let's hope Freddy can come up trumps with the truffles. So we've been out for a few minutes now. Freddy's off doing his thing. What's he actually sniffing out? Yeah, so Freddy's looking for, obviously, the truffle scent. Where's the truffles? Freddy's got quite a difficult job because it's such a windy day that that scent column, if you imagine uh, if you lit a candle and you blow it out, that little plume of smoke, if you imagine that going off with the wind, that's kind of what's happening to the scent. So it's really hard for Freddy to locate that, follow it and pinpoint where the truffle is. And how will we know when he's found something? Uh, he'll Hopefully, he will put his paw by it and he will lie down. So that's, that's what we're waiting for. He looks quite, uh, quite in the zone. You know, he's concentrating, so that's good. He's got his nose to the ground and he's moving across looking for those scent columns. He may have his nose to the ground, but right now... I'm not so sure Freddy's head's in the game. Philip, how's Freddy done? I think he's had a great time. He's definitely <laughs> he was picking up some interesting smells. I've no doubt uh, there's truffle activity going on. You find them the most unexpected times, 
and when you're sure you're going to find one, you don't. I guess that's why they're such a valuable harvest. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Quite mysterious, I guess. Freddie might not have struck gold, but it looks like Paul may have in his effort to bring the black truffle back to Britain's forests. It's amazing to think that this tiny little lump goes for such high prices. But now having discovered what goes into nurturing, cultivating and <clears throat> finding it, I can truly appreciate why the truffle is known as the black diamond of the kitchen.